Hey there, what's up internet? My name is Black Light Attack. I am the law, and this is episode 5 of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. So last time, uh, we dressed up as a beautiful woman, and we, uh, we gotta get going with that. Look at it. Oh, we so pretty. We so pretty. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. So, uh, in case you missed the last episode and are wondering why I'm dressed as a beautiful woman, um, that is because we need to infiltrate, uh, the lair of a pimp slash, uh, basically mobster boss who will not allow men into his mansion because he's a lady he's a ladies man um, so real quick I'm checking around to see if I can buy any any materia because I kind of I've kind of been neglecting buying weapons and materia um, and not really but uh, where is the weapon shop here um, I forgot to in Walmart because I was too preoccupied with the whole subplot oh I remember where the weapon shop is the um, I've been a little bit preoccupied with the whole cross-dressing subplot, so <laughs> weapon shop is right here. And I don't know if they'll actually sell anything to Cloud when he's dressed as a woman, but, uh, yeah, they will. Okay, nice. Um, so Eris can get an upgrade for her, her mithril rod, and I think, does she only have one slot on her standard, which I think the guard staff? Guard stick. Yeah, okay, so that's... Generally speaking, with Aeris, you, you don't really auto-attack with her a whole lot, or uh, you don't really use her physical attack too often, but um, the extra materia slot, if you if you open that up, you see that it has an extra materia slot. That's pretty useful, so. Um, we can also do the same for Tifa. We already have that gun with Barret, and then we can get a we can get some mithril armlets. Let's, uh, let's buy two of those, and then I'm going to be out of money. Okay. And uh, we can grind some cash later, but... Money is not exactly easy to come by when you're still in Midgar, um, but you know once we get out a little bit, once we start getting into some some more boss fights, the, in Midgar uh, boss fights are chained together pretty quickly in pretty quick succession, so you can start building up some cash. So, damn your friends hot too. Come in, come in, oh baby. Yeah, I know, I'm beautiful. Two ladies coming true. Oh yeah, that wasn't this convenient. So, uh, we're actually just about to get explained exactly what's going on here with this, uh, this Don Corneo guy. Hey, ladies. What's up, baby? I'll go and let the Don know you're here. Wait here. Don't go wandering around now. Yeah, fuck that. I'm wandering. See ya, bud. Now's our chance. Let's find Tifa. Yeah. Eris don't give a fuck. I like how Eris actually sort of follows you during this part. Later in Final Fantasy VIII, um, your, your party members would actually always follow you around. Um, but in Final Fantasy VII, they do the old-school Final Fantasy thing where they all go inside the main character, and they're just sort of represented by that one main character. There you are, Tifa. How you doing, baby? Uh, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm ugly. Cloud, Miss Cloud is very shy. Are they able to just keep using Cloud's name because it's, like, sort of genderless because it's not really a name? I mean, T Eris and Tifa aren't real names either. Well, I don't know. Tifa might be as far as I know, but they both sound very feminine. Cloud is like, you can go either way, I guess. Anyway, Tifa? Nice to meet you. I'm Eris. How you doing? Cloud's told me a lot about you. And you, uh... Hey, you're the one with the Cloud in the park. Right, with Cloud. How, do you really need to convince that? Don't worry, we just met. It's nothing. What do you mean, don't worry? About what? Uh-oh. Ladies getting mad? No, don't misunderstand. Cloud and I grew up together. Nothing more. Hey, fuck you! We were, we were going to meet. We were going to be lovers, baby. Poor Cloud, having to stand here and listen to both of us call him nothing. You son of a bitch! Don't you tell. Don't you tell her that it's me. Don't you tell her that it's me. It's me. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> He's dressed as a woman. Why are you dressed like that? What are you doing here? Uh, I just really always felt like this inside. I just wanted to be a lady so bad. What happened after the fall? Are you hurt? Nah, I'm fine, baby. Hey, give me a chance to answer. Calm down. I'm just like this because there was no other way to get in here. Duh. I'm alright. Ares, help me out. Oh, Ares. Anyway, uh, so what exactly are you doing here? Uh, first off, can I point out real quick that we're very obviously in a sex dungeon? I mean, that, that like, strap down chair. Actually, that looks like it's covered in blood, so this might actually just be a torture dungeon. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the, um, at the tools on the table down the bottom there. I see, like, some pliers, a whip. Those could arguably be sexual. I think, I, I think I see, like, a a uh like a riding crop down there but then i see like a morning star mace so this is probably where they where they like interrogate people that they aren't very happy with <laughs> could be both i don't know um i'll just plug my ears but anyway yeah this is this is a um this is a place of sexual deviance so I i'm honestly not sure which it is it's also it's also a crime syndicate so 
they, it could really go either way. Anyway, when we got back from the number five reactor, there was this weird man. So Barrett caught him and squeezed some information out of him. And the Don's name popped up. So the Don is up to something. Don Corneo, Barrett told me to leave the Letch alone, but something's been bothering her. Uh-oh. So you wanted to get the story straight from Corneo's mouth himself. You gotta get it straight from the cornhole. I made it here, but now I'm in a bind. Corneo's just looking for a bride. Every day he gets three girls, chooses one of them, and then... Anyway, Tifa's, uh, Tifa's gotta be the girl, or else. Sorry, but I overheard. If you know the three girls, there's no problem, right? So, basically, every night, Don Corneo picks three girls, and then chooses one, fucks them. Tifa wanted to be the girl for tonight so that she could actually get him alone, so that she could squeeze information out of him, because... Tifa's gonna fuck a dude up. <laughs> Nobody, no man's gonna be able to force himself on Tifa. Tifa will seriously beat your ass. Tifa's like scary. Um, so, you know, and you know, obviously, Eris senses that there's an opportunity here, and it doesn't matter if Tifa's the girl picked for the night because if all three of us, if the three girls are all in on your plan, no matter who gets alone with them, somebody can squeeze the information out of them. So. Eris is uh, volunteering to be the third girl. Obviously, Cloud would be the second, and uh, we're we're going to be the three girls who uh, who basically Corneo has a choice between. So, thanks, Miss Eris. And you know, and all of a sudden, uh, Eris and Tifa are actually getting along pretty well. Surprising. These are I'll tell you guys right now. These are the two love interests for the game. The two main love interests uh, for Cloud in the game. But um, they're they're not they don't really have like a rivalry or anything. I probably don't need need to ask, but the other girl is me. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get fucked, Cloud. There was no need to ask. You're go you're gonna be the girl. Oh no. Oh no. This is bad. This is bad. Oh man. They putting me up to get fucked. I don't want to get fucked. The Don's waiting in his room. Ha ha ha. Well, that's sinister. You don't have you don't need to laugh. It's just cruel. Oh Jesus. All right, let's go. Let's just get it over with. Koch. All right, ladies. All right, Koch. Black dude with a blonde mohawk. Line up in front of the Don. So the Don's like this fat dude who also has a mohawk. I don't know if that's like their thing is blonde mohawks, but he's a sh short little fat dude in like a Hugh Hefner robe. <laughs> a Hugh Hefner bathrobe. Good, splendid. So horny he jumps over his desk. I, this character's great, actually. Now let's see, which girl should I choose? Hmm. Hmm. This one? Hmm. This one? I, if you notice, every time he looks at Cloud, Cloud sort of like turns his face away because he doesn't want him to see. Yeah, like this. He doesn't want him to look at him head on so that he realizes he's a man. Ooh, I made up my mind. My choice for tonight is... Oh, no. Oh, no, the drum roll. This healthy-looking girl, he chose me? All right, so this is why I was I was intent on getting um, all of the... All of the stuff, all of the uh, all the best costume pieces. I love chickies who play hard to get. Yowza! <laughs> this guy's a fucking just. He's the worst. Um, you t you can have the other ones. Oh no! Oh no! He's given them. He's given him his leftovers. Shall we go, my pretty? Uh, so you you can actually be the girl of the night for the dawn if you dress up well enough. Now obviously Cloud is actually a man, so you have to dress up really well in order to fool the dawn into into thinking that you are prettier than both Eris and Tifa. But <laughs> it's it's there's actually no benefit to this. It's actually if if you're looking for items and experience, it's actually better to go and get picked, uh, have one of the other girls get picked. But this is faster, and uh, it's also just funny. It's just, all right, Pussycat, come to daddy. Uh, I think I'm gonna grab this hidden hyper behind your bed, because I assume you're using that as some sort of boner-inducing device. But, you're so cute, I never get tired of looking at you. Oh, Jesus, do you like me too? Mm, you don't like me? There, there's someone else, isn't there? His name is Barrett. <laughs> Barrett's my main squeeze, I gotta say. No way, Barrett, that sounds familiar. You know, he's one of the ones you were trying to find out about. You know, Avalanche. Yeah, 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 it's in Sector 7 in the slum. And how do you know? <laughs> this little, like, froggy leap. Oh, it's time for the big reveal. I'm a man, baby. You tricked me. Yeah, you still want to fuck? Somebody get in here now. And no one will be coming to help. Because Tifa and Arish just beat the shit out of them. You're the ones from before. What the hell's going on? 
Shut up, we're asking the questions now, you son of a bitch. What did your assistants find out? Talk if you don't tell us. I'll chop them off. Oh, snap. This is how you get through to a man like this. You threaten his testicles. Not that. I'll talk. I'll tell you air dang. So talk. I made him find out where the man with the gun arm was. And obviously it's Barrett. But that's what I was ordered to do. That's what I was ordered to do, baby. By who? No, if I told you that I'd be killed. Oh, yeah? If you don't tell us. Uh-oh. I'll rip him off. <laughs> no. No. It was Heidegger or Shinra. So Heidegger we haven't met yet, but Heidegger is the head of the public safety maintenance, which basically means he's, like, the head of the secret police of Shinra, um, who is not only a power company, but also, the, like, the de facto government of the entire world. Um, the head of public safety maintenance? Did you say the Shinra? What are they up to? Talk, if you don't tell us. Dum, dum, dum. I'll smash them. <laughs> no, you're serious. Oh, no. Enough fool out here either, you know. Shinra's trying to crush a small rebel, uh, rebel group called Avalanche, and want to infiltrate their hideout. And they're really going to crush them, literally, by breaking the support holding up the plate above them. Oh, shit. You know what's gonna happen? The plate will go ping, and everything's gonna go BAM, and I heard their, their hideout's in the Sector 7 slums. I'm just glad it's not here in Sector 6. Okay, so that big plate on the sky, they're gonna destroy the support beam holding the plate up above Sector 7, which is gonna fall and kill everybody in Sector 7 just to get an Avalanche. And we've, we've just squeezed this out of the Don. Just a second! Shut your mouth! No, wait, it'll only take a second, for real. How do you think scum like me feels when they babble on about the truth? They pretty much giving up on life, they're sure they'll win, or they don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, I, I honestly think you don't know what the hell's going on because you don't know who the hell you're messing with, but I, I know you think you'll win. Woohoo, right! It doesn't matter what you pick there. Son of a bitch with the trapdoors! Oh, nice dance! <laughs> Don Corneo can dance, baby. And now we're gonna see a little cutscene. Okay, so this guy, this fat man in the green coat, this is Heidegger, who they were just talking about. And he's, like I said, he's like the head of the secret police. They call it, like, the public safety maintenance, but he's basically, like, the, uh... He's, he's the guy that keeps everybody quiet and, and stops them from, uh, rebelling or questioning the Shinra. So, how are preparations going? Ha ha ha! Smoothly, very smoothly. I assigned the Turks to this. So the Turks are, um... Like, we, we met Reno in the Sector 5 Slums Church. Those are the Turks. And uh, Reeve is like, are we, are we really going to do this? Simply destroy a group with only a few members? What's the problem, Reeve? You went out? No. But as head of the Urban Development Department, I've been involved in the building and running a bit here. So Reeve is a... Uh, he's actually probably the only person who works at Shinra actually has a heart. Uh, and uh, the mayor of... The mayor of uh, Midgar is against this plan. Reeve is against this plan. But uh, Heidegger is all about Heidegger is very ruthless, we'll find out. So is, so is President Shinra, um, obviously. So The mayor actually is just like a public figurehead. The, the real uh, leaders of the world are Shinra. So Heidegger is going to go ahead and uh, get it started. Reeve is not okay with this. Reeve is actually a decent human being. <laughs> no one else. Um, why don't you go take a couple days off and go somewhere? Aw, oh, thanks, President. You're so nice. After you commit genocide and kill an entire section of a city, he's offering his employees uh, some some paid vacation time. We'll destroy Sector 7 and report that Avalanche did it. Then we'll send in the rescue operation care of Shinra Inc. Heh heh heh, this is perfect. Wringing his hands together in evil... Uh, okay, I don't even know what... I don't even know he's wringing his hands together in evil... Oh man, girls, you cannot take a fall in the evil... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Anticipation of his master plan. You alright? Man, this is terrible. This sucks. Eris, how you doing? You good? Yeah, Eris is fine. We just got dumped in shit water. That's great. Well, the worst is over. Oh, you just had to say something, didn't you? Maybe not. Bum, bum, bum. Boss fight time. I don't think we even really had an opportunity. Oh no, I think there is an opportunity to equip Tifa, but Tifa's not gonna have any, uh, oh sweet, she has a limit break, but she's not gonna have any, uh, materia on right now, so. Here we go, Sewer Tsunami. Okay, so this is, this is a boss. This is like Don Corneo's evil pet that lives in the sewers below his trap door. And this thing is, um, his name's Apps. He's actually one of the easier bosses in the game because as you just saw, he has an ability called Sewer Tsunami. And when you call Sewer Tsunami, it either comes from behind him or from behind the party. 
And depending on which it is, it, it'll always hurt both the party and you. But if he pounds his chest, it's gonna come from behind him, and it actually deals way more damage to him and almost none to you. So there, it did like 187 damage to him, and it did like no damage to us. Um, and uh, like 20 damage or something to us. It does do a decent amount of damage if it comes from behind you and only a little bit to him. And if he jumps up and down, then it's going to come from behind you. Not that that really matters, but um, he'll probably see it before the fight's over. But he, he honestly hurts himself so much, and he's really not a difficult boss. The other the other thing you need to know is, um, yes, yeah, so he jumps up and down. Now it's going to come from behind us. Uh, he, he's weak to fire magic as well for some reason, so I don't know why not like thunder magic. I guess it just doesn't operate on like Pokemon logic, but we have fire materia on Eris, which is good because she has a pretty good, um, she's a pretty good magic stat, but we got a limit break coming up and, uh, we might be learning cross slash soon, which is, uh, which is Cloud's next, next limit break, because as I said before, in, or in order to learn the next limit break within the, the level, um, you need to use your first limit break a couple of times. So, we have a cure-all material, might as well use that right now. Although, Eris is probably going to build up her limit break pretty soon, and her limit break is a uh, is a party heal, which is pretty nice, but... Cure-all at this stage in the game just makes you, like, unkillable. You only have one, because you can only cast the all material once. But, yeah, go ahead. I hope he kills himself. Go ahead. Ah, he didn't kill himself. Tifa's got another limit break. I don't know if I explained this, but Tifa's limit break is kind of kind of uh, interesting. As as she gets more, it's a slot reel, and as she gets more more uh, limit break levels, she uh, she it basically strings together all into one combo. Rather than getting a more powerful single attack, she'll actually um, she'll actually chain all seven of her hits together. Um, there's a total of of seven limit breaks. But let's see, Eris has her first limit break with oh, too late. Apps is dead. Um, so right now, her limit break is very weak because we only have her first limit break, and it's it's just not going to do a whole lot of damage um, by itself. But as we continue to build onto her limit breaks, it's eventually going to be one long combo. Her limit break is really not the best because, again, it's only a max seven hits, but um, it, could be, it could be fairly strong, but it's too late. Marlene, Barrett, people of the slums, don't give up. Never give up hope. It's not easy to destroy the pillow, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, you're right. We still have time. Okay, so it's a race back to Sector 7 to see if we can uh, prevent it from falling and uh, crushing everybody in the slums because that would be really bad. Owl of Avalanche is there. Uh, Jesse, Biggs, Wedge, Barrett, Barrett's daughter, Marlene. Um, and not to mention all of just the innocent people who are going to end up paying for for uh, the crimes of of, uh, what's it called, of Avalanche, um, which is just, we, we don't want that to happen. I think these guys are weak to Bolt Magic. Um, until I get out of these sewers, I'm probably gonna skip these battles, because these guys have a lot of health, and I'll do one battle just so you can, just so you can see, but, like, they, they have, they just have so much health. They take a long time to kill, and they don't deal a lot of damage, but they're relatively fast enemies, so they'll end up using their, um, their water gun attack a whole lot and just taking up more time. They just, they just take forever to kill. Um, but I think Cloud's about, yeah, Cloud's got his limit break, so let's just focus one of them down. Tifa's already got another limit break, too, nice. So, I should be trying to time Tifa's slots better, because, um, if you get the, she has hits, and then she has yeah, and if you get yeah in the middle, if the middle one is a yeah, it deals, I think, double damage. Um, so I should be trying to time that a little bit better. Um, and then as she, as she gets more limit breaks, you can actually get a miss. Uh, on the slot, which will mean she'll skip that attack, so she'll end up doing less damage overall. And you don't you don't want that, so we'll just finish this battle real quick, and then the rest of them I'm gonna skip. I just want to get out of here because I really hate this area. These guys just take no damage, and Tifa still doesn't have any materia on. Actually, no, I think I forgot to equip that cover materia that we picked up outside of Eris's house, which is a while ago now. I always forget to put that thing on. I don't know why. Another thing I forgot, and thank you to uh, D Flower Day Soul, who in the comments of the last video pointed out that I forgot to pick up, uh, or forgot to look at the Wu Tai poster. There's a mini game, not really a mini game, but like just this sort of uh, continual thing um, throughout the game. There are posters kind of posted up in random places uh, throughout the game that are advertisements for a a, um, a restaurant that you'll come to later in the game. And if you see them all, if you find them all. You'll uh, you'll end up getting a prize when you when you eventually visit it um, later in the game. So uh, we want to do that. That's good. So we got a steel material. That's good. Uh, I'm gonna put cover on cloud, and then I'm gonna take I'm gonna go to lightning all, so we can hit all of our enemies. I'm gonna give Tifa the cure materia. 
And then let's go ahead and give her her new weapon as well. Um, give her the Mithril Armlet. We're going to want Cloud to have the Mithril Armlet as well because he's got the Cover Materia. Cover Materia increases your vitality a little bit and then will um, it gives you a 20% chance to... Uh, when an enemy or when a teammate is getting attacked, uh, now that Cloud has the cover material, he has a 20% chance of diving in front of them and taking the attack for them. So it's just it's just a nice way to uh, sort of focus your damage in on one person. You'll usually obviously want to put it on your your most bulky character, and right now Cloud has the most HP, probably the best defenses as well. So let's go ahead and fast forward through this battle. Okay, so that steel material we just picked up, we put on Tifa. I think that the steel roll is rolled off of your dexterity. Um, and Tifa usually has pretty good dexterity. Yeah, she, she has the highest dexterity on our team. She has 15, where as Cloud is 13 and Eris is 11. So, um, And the, the steel, steel material will actually provide a statistical bonus to your dexterity as well. Um, so... She's just generally, at this point in the game, the best person to put the steel material on. Obviously, that gives you an opportunity to steal items from enemies, which is pretty good. Eris, I got you mixed up in all this. Nah, shut the fuck up. Don't tell me to go home. Everybody keeps telling Eris to go home. Seriously, Eris, Eris just go home. Seriously, please. Nah. But, uh, so this is the, uh, this is the train graveyard, as it's known. And, um, we can go ahead and save our game right here. This is just where a whole bunch of broken down trains live. And they, um... This, this is just a, a section that's sort of no longer used that, um... Oh yeah, not enough memory on my virtual memory card. Um, this will just connect uh, to the Sector 7. And if you if you remember, in Sector 7 there was a little train station um, where uh, where we use, that we use to access the uh, the other sectors. That's, that's where it connects. So, go ahead and grab that. And then there's a high potion in that oil drum over there, so let's go ahead to that. And I might be skipping these battles as well. I might stick around for the first one and explain one of my little strategies at this point in the game. If we get the right enemies, if not, I'll fast forward. If we did not get the right enemies, fast forward time. Okay, so, um... We're gonna run into some ghosts here. That, that's just one of the enemies. They're not really significant to the plot or anything, but we're gonna be running into them, um, and they're pretty useful. You can steal an item off them. You just got the steel materia, and most enemies are gonna give you like some status effect curing items, or maybe some, um, maybe some uh, you know potions and stuff. Uh, the ghost enemies will actually give you uh, an item called... Yeah, yeah here they are. Um, they'll actually give you an, an item called Ghost Hands. Now, these guys are really annoying because when you hit them, they disappear. But when they disappear, they can't attack. As you see, I just, just hit one with, uh, with Eris, and then it's going to disappear for a few seconds. There we go, stole a Ghost Hand. And when you hit them, or even just you steal against them, they actually can't attack. So you basically just spread out your attacks. I think they only appear in groups of three or more, and then you can't hit them, but they also can't attack, so you basically just lock them down by just spreading out the damage, and... Oh, wait, I actually, I actually already stole from that one. And I'm gonna want to pick up a couple of ghost hands here, because, um... They, it's a pretty useful item. What, it, what it'll do is, um, at this point in the game, ethers are pretty rare and expensive, and ether are the item that you use to restore your MP. As we can see, Eris is getting pretty low on MP. Ghost Hand will drain some MP from a target. It's not a huge amount, it's, uh, like, I don't know, probably anywhere from, like, 12 to 20 MP, but, um, they are, uh, they're very useful this early in the game to just kind of, sort of keep your MP up a little bit, um, and, uh, be able to just spam your, your magic abilities. Um, very handy. I like doing it at this point in the game. Now, I did steal one already, and I would use one on Eris right now, but, uh, unfortunately, you can't use the item you've stolen, I think, until after the battle is over, unless that was only on the PC version. Uh, yeah, so I can't use it quite yet. Um, so I'm just gonna have Tifa keep trying to steal another ghost hand while, uh, Cloud and Eris are just gonna pummel them with physical attacks and try to, try to keep them from attacking us while this goes on, because this can take a while. If you really want to take out these guys quick, um, and they can be really annoying, but if you want to take them out quick, you should use magic against them. It's, it's much more effective, but... There we go, finally got a ghost hand, so now I can just finish these guys off. There 
There you go. One of the more annoying enemies in the game. They do take a while to kill. And, um, with that disappearing bullshit, a lot of times I, I just end up running away from them because they're so damn annoying. Is there anything down this way for me to pick up? I think not. So, let's go ahead. The way we're supposed to go. And what do we have here? Some Dargons. Okay, these guys aren't too... They don't take a whole lot of punishment. And where's my ghost hands? There we go. You know what I really need to do is uh, increase my... Um, increase my text and battle speed, because that'll make these things go a little bit faster. I'll try to remember to do that. So there we go, 16 MP for Aeris, which is like two, two spell casts. Very useful at this point in the game. Yeah, crit that bitch. Let's go. And uh, I'm basically just going to have... Uh, Eris steals some MP using our, um, using our ghost hands we just got. Although, actually, we have a boss fight coming up, and Eris is gonna separate from the party. A uh, little spoiler warning. It's not nothing major. She just kind of runs away for a second to do something else. And, um, she's actually not gonna need that much MP. And I think we actually get healed before that event starts, so I don't know. That was actually kind of a waste. Oh well, it'll help us get through the, gr the ghost graveyard. And this this part of the game is is fairly annoying because um, navigating these empty ass broken down trains can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes if you don't know where you're going and don't know the game like the back of your hand like I do. And um, I knew there was another item here. And uh, those ghosts, like I said, those ghosts are just so annoying. Uh, one thing I forgot, they're actually weak to fire magic, so you can deal a solid like 160, 150 damage in one fire cast. So. Put that on Eris, because I think Eris usually, at this point of the game, even though she's so low level, usually has the highest magic stat in the game. Uh, 25. Well, no, Cloud has higher. Never mind. But uh, So one more screen of this bullshit. We got these trains that are obviously not pre-rendered like the rest of the the rest of the trains. We gotta use, because they still work. Use this train to push that train. We're just gonna make like a little bridge, kind of. Um... Do, do, do. Go over this way. We're gonna get that potion up there. Do, do, do. And we got a pretty major scene coming just about now. But the uh, the episode's almost over, so I think it's gonna have to wait. Oh no. Got a high potion. High potion, very nice. So high potion's like a thousand HP, I think. 500, something like that. I think a standard potion's like 100 or 200. I always forget in this game. Um, so yeah, now that we. I guess the only purpose of pushing the first train out of the way was just to... I guess you don't use it as a bridge, you just kind of push it out of the way. Okay... What do we got here? More Dargons! Okay. We can handle these. Real quick, we got we got that Bolt All coming up. And there's always the opportunity to build more Limit Meter, because even though we're going to get healed... Oh wow, they don't take anything from Lightning. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, even though we're about to get healed before the uh, next big encounter... Uh, we have the, the, our limit breaks are going to stay the same, so you know, take some opportunity to take a little bit of damage and build up our limit break meters a little bit. There you go, crit me, baby. Whenever you get crit, it's going to build a lot of uh, it's going to build a lot of limit meter. And Cloud's got that cover on, so he's he's blocking hits that was intended for Tifa. And Cloud's got a limit break now, and I think that's probably going to kill it, which is unfortunate because I really want to heal Cloud because I don't want him to die. <laughs> before we actually get to the encounter. We shall see. Cross slash gain, nice. Okay, so let's take this opportunity for me to like explain how limit breaks are learned because I, I feel like I did a really poor job uh, on the first time I tried to explain it because I didn't I didn't have like the screen up or anything. So let's go ahead and show you real quick. Um, okay, so as you can see right here, I have my level one limit breaks. Each level uh, up until level four for most characters has two limit breaks. There's two level one limit breaks, two level two, two level three, and then one level four. And level, the level four limit break is known as your ultimate limit break, um, which you usually don't get until earlier in the game. Only only Eris gets her her ultimate limit break very early in the game, and it's very hard to do that. Um, not hard, just you need to you need to know where you're going. So w w when you use the first level limit break, so in this case Braver for level one, a certain amount of times, I think it's like seven or eight for Cloud to, to learn Cross Slash, you learn the next level limit break. So how do you go to level two? That character has to finish off a certain amount of enemies. It's usually a couple hundred, um, like 150, 200, something like that. So there's actually going to be an area in the game later on where um, we can actually 
learn uh, all of our limit breaks very easily. It's just the perfect grind spot for learning all of your characters up until that point that you have. You can learn all their limit breaks very quickly, very easily. Um, and it's just, uh, it's really convenient. I'll show you guys that grind spot when we get to it. It's still a little ways away. But, um, see, I heard a rumor that the plate was going to fall, crushing the station. I've worked at it for so many years, but I just can't bear to leave here. That sucks. You're gonna die because you're attached to a job, dude. Oh, man. If the plate falls, we're gonna we're gonna try to uh, we're gonna try to stop that. Oh shit! The pillar standing. Oh man! You hear something above us? Gunfire? Oh shit! What's going down? Oh man! So this is the pillar that's holding the plate above the Sector Seven slums. And the plate again is where all the rich people live, generally speaking. But oh shit! Oh man! Is that Barrett? The whole, there's like a whole war, war going on right there. Oh shit, somebody just fell. Somebody's about to fall. Somebody just fell. Wedge, no! No! Wedge! Oh, Jesus. Oh, he's dead. I don't think anybody would survive that fall. Wedge, you alright? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I just fell like 900 feet. Cloud, you remembered my name. Barret's up top. Help him. And Cloud, sorry, wasn't any help. Yeah, you're kind of useless. Oh, no. I'm going up. R.I.P. Wedge. Eris, you look after Wedge. Eris, do me a favor. Fuck Wedge. He's an asshole. No one cares about him. I have a bar called 7th Heaven in the neighborhood. There's a little girl named Marlene there. Say them all, say them all. I'll put her somewhere safe. All right. Shit. It's dangerous here. Everybody get away from the pillar, quickly. Everyone get out of Sector 7. That, that's not what she said to do. She did not say crowd around the pillar, you fucking idiots. Okay, so I think at this point we should be fully healed. Yes, okay. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and end the video there. That's a good a good place to save. Um, we're gonna try to stop the pillar from falling, hopefully. Right now the Shinra is attacking it, but they're sort of doing it in an underhanded way, even though it doesn't seem very underhanded. Um, their goal is to drop the Sector 7 plate on the slums, killing Avalanche, and then blaming Avalanche for the attack, and it looks like Barrett sort of just bought right into that plan, because obviously he wanted to defend his home, so he immediately went up the pillar and started fighting. So everybody just sees Barrett firing his gun at the top of the pillar, which is about to explode, so he's, right now, so far, he's playing in, into the uh, Shinra's plot perfectly. We're going to see if we can stop it from happening. Hope you guys will join me next time. Don't forget to like the video if you did. It is a new series. And uh, this is the time to attract new viewers like yourselves. So if you did enjoy it, don't forget to like it. It helps me out a lot, and I'll love you. See you guys next time. Goodbye.